you did a very interesting presentation recently where you basically explained to people if you were to go into Coinbase and you saw Bitcoin and all these other things, why it's Bitcoin. Um, I, I, I think it's good to revisit that as well. Sure, because. I, I'm definitely going to be forwarding this show out to a few people to listen to. And, I, and I, I, you know, we're back in that time where your friends are phoning you and they're like, am I too late for Bitcoin? What about the other Bitcoins? And you're trying to explain to people. Uh, but you approached it. I think you approached it in a re- very interesting way. Well, I did two. Uh, I think the I did one in Madeira yeah. and then I did one uh, in Prague. Right. Well, I want to touch on the Prague one. Okay. Where you went into proof of work. Yeah. Why proof of work is so important. And like I know a lot of people wouldn't know this already, but let's preface it, but just a very quick TLDR what proof of work is so people understand we're talking about mining and et cetera. Yeah. Um, it's a hash cost function is technically what Adam Back created. You have to do a verifiable amount of work of computational expense to produce a data set, to produce a random number. Um, You can set how difficult it is to do that. So how much computational effort uh, it requires to achieve that, and you can verify it instantly. The main point is proof of work is the only digital object that's tied to the physical world, right? And that's like the the thing Adam Back created that blew everyone's mind and changed the way we think about everything is he was able to create a digital data set that implies physical reality, that tells us that real physical electrons were moved in the physical universe. Um, and that that is the invention of proof of work. I don't know if that's the answer that you were looking for, but. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. And, and it was the explanation of why proof of work is uh, more ex- more important than proof of stake, the differences between the two. Yeah, so. Because it, I, honestly, you crystallize it in a way that I hadn't heard it talked about before. Yeah, well, okay. Um, so, you know, the fallacy that, you know, money is this like construct. If we all believe that bananas are money, they're money. If we all believe Ethereum is money, they're money. So it's this collective illusion yeah. of belief. That's not true, right? Like money is a technology uh, in the same way that an airplane is technology. If we all believe that a banana is an airplane, you can run off a cliff and jump on the banana and then you'll die. And that'll fix everyone thinking that a banana is an airplane. So money rewards you matching your expectations to physical reality, right? So for those that want to travel and get on an actual airplane, they'll get to their destination. For those that want to travel and get on a banana, they'll die. And so you're rewarded to match to physical reality, right? And so this collection of beliefs that like proof of stake, proof of stake is banana airplane, right? It has no physical ties to the real world. It doesn't honor and respect physical reality. It is an abstracted illusion. The reason that proof of work does and is tied to physical reality is again, because it requires the physical universe to produce a specific amount of energy um, to computate and solve a math problem. And the digital world's able to understand that math problem because it's just a piece of data. But that piece of data can only be produced by the physical universe. And so, therefore, Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency, is the only digital money that respects the physical laws of the universe, which makes it an actual contender to be money. It is energy money, right? Denominated in time, like I said. Whereas Ethereum is a construct in people's brains that... You know, if everyone wants to treat Ethereum as money and save themselves from what we're talking about, the bond market collapse and currency debasement, they're going to jump on a banana and try and fly and they're going to get hurt. Did you blow your own mind when you went through and constructed the presentation? Yeah. I mean, Bitcoin's like the most, I mean, what Satoshi has created is, uh, I mean, it's almost a spiritual experience trying to understand it. It Mm -hmm. is mind blowing. I mean, I was, I was thinking about this podcast and coming to talk to you guys and I blew my own mind. It, it really, I, I hope I'm articulating this well. It really blows my mind where monies are time and energy in an abstracted form. Bitcoin is the only money that is backed by time and energy, right? Like <laughs> it actually, I mean, the foresight that Satoshi had to have had, it's really hard to comprehend. So what, what would be the perfect money? The perfect money, so the government can just print time and energy backed by nothing. So what's the perfect money? The perfect money is the only way to create it is by contributing energy. 
So it's energy-backed money. Okay, that's proof of work. The other perfect property of money is the time piece, right? How do you incorporate time? Well, how much energy is required to create a Bitcoin? It's denominated in time. 10 minutes worth of energy is the answer. You're like, wow. So money is a market good. That's our time and energy in abstracted form. Bitcoin is money backed by time and energy in the physical universe. It's crazy, right? And what he created is like, we have this digital ledger we all share. Who gets to write to that ledger? Who gets to update it? The Fed, Sailor, Fink, Trump? No. Whoever solves the proof of work hash cost function is the answer. Who's that? Some any of us. Bit any of us. <laughs> any of us who can take the energy from the physical universe and, and back our money with it, right? And then denominating it in time is just a mind-blowing concept. And so it is the first man-made money we've ever had engineered to be perfect, engineered to solve these exact problems. So when I say it's the best expression of currency debasement, right? It is the antithesis of fiat currency. This conversation with Jack Mallers was really captivating, rich with insights into the fundamental principles of Bitcoin, the critical role of proof of work, and the broader implications for the future of digital money. The three main lessons from this conversation are 1. Proof of work significance Bitcoin's proof of work mechanism uniquely ties digital currency to the physical world by requiring real energy expenditure. This connection to physical reality differentiates it from other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, which rely on less grounded mechanisms like proof of stake. 2. Energy-backed money Bitcoin is positioned as the only digital asset that respects physical laws, being backed by energy and time. The process of mining represents a transfer of physical energy into a verifiable digital form, making Bitcoin a revolutionary form of energy money. 3. Bitcoin as a hedge against currency debasement Unlike fiat currencies that can be printed without physical backing, Bitcoin's design ensures it maintains a tie to real-world constraints. This makes it a potential solution for those seeking to protect wealth against currency debasement and the risks associated with traditional financial systems. So, what do you think about this Bitcoin conversation? Do you agree with Jack Mallers and his arguments? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this type of content and want to see more, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, Keep learning and keep stacking.